Guys, there is major game-changing news on the USM Elite landscape. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the revolutionary announcement of the changes coming to USM Elite. Now, if you haven't heard, the two organizations that are responsible for granting licensure in the United States, these include FSMB, the Federation of State Medical Boards, and the NBME, the National Board of Medical Examiners, these two organizations just announced that there are going to be very radical changes to USMLE. And in this video, I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about what those changes are. And then at the end, I'll tell you my opinion about what they mean for you if you're still in medical school or about to get started in medical school and are just pretty much wondering how the changes will affect you. So instead of just rambling throughout the whole video, I want to organize this video a little bit. So the learning objectives for this video and basically the outline of what I'm going to talk about is what you see on this slide. So what are the new score reporting changes? Is this the same for step one and step two? Why were there these really massive changes to USMLE? How was this decision made? When do these new changes take effect? Does this change how you should study? Does this change how you should approach other parts of medical school that really don't have anything to do with USMLE at all? And what other changes are there to USMLE that maybe you haven't heard about yet? So this is what I'm going to run through in this video. And bear with me because these changes are going to affect you if you're still in medical school. So let's start by talking about the new changes. So if you haven't heard, USMLE Step 1 scores are going to officially be changing to pass-fail. So... You know, right now, the the scores are reported as three-digit scores, so you can get, you know, like everyone wants the 240 or higher, but that's going away, guys. It's going to be a pass-fail exam. Pass or fail. Two options. You either exceed the score that you need to pass, or you fail it. So that's the new score reporting change. And this is pretty cool, right? So residency programs aren't going to see that you have a 210, a 220, a 230, a 240. They're going to either see pass or they're going to see fail. That's it. Is this the same for step one and step two? So only step one will be reported as pass fail, but step two CK is still going to retain the three digit score that, it, that you currently are familiar with. So the changes that I'm talking about and these really important changes only apply to step one. Step two is same thing that you're used to now and everybody gets a 266, right? So I guess the question is, why did this change, right? What is happening that these two organizations decided it's time to make this test pass fail. Well, their rationale and what they've explained and offered to us so far is that there's been too much emphasis placed on USMLE step one, three digit scores. And what you see on the bottom of this slide is the results from the 2018 program director survey. So if you guys don't know, every year, there's what's called match outcomes. And there's all these different reports that are generated. and in one of those reports, this organization goes to all of the program directors of all of the residencies in the United States, and anybody who's willing to answer some questions can basically cite the factors that they feel are really important for selecting residents, and then they can rate them out of five, zero to five, five being the most important and zero being the least important in terms of how much weight they give to each of those different things. And what you see on the bottom of this slide is the results from the 2018 study. So 1,233 program directors responded. So the, there's an N of 1233. And what you see here is that, by and large, the USMLE Step 1 score was cited 94% of the time as an important factor for selecting applicants just to give interviews to, okay? So that's obviously, on this list, the most important. And it has a rating of 4.1, which is really significant. So the USMLE Step 1 score is huge for program directors to decide, are they going to give you an interview and open the door of their residency program to you? Now, the two organizations that I showed you at the beginning of this video thought that there was way too much emphasis placed on the three-digit score. And I guess this is a good segue into the next question, how was this decision made? So basically, what these two organizations did was they convened a series of meetings, and I'm taking a quote directly from their website. They said, in reaching this decision, the USMLE co-sponsors engaged educators, 
regulators, examinees, and members of the public through surveys, presentations at national meetings, webinars, podcasts, etc. So they basically put together a gigantic focus group, if you will. And they concluded by talking to all of these different people who to some extent are important in the process of medical licensure and board examinations that there was way too much emphasis placed on these step one scores. And it was driving med students insane. And I think that this is pretty easily verifiable. I mean, you go online, look at the number of the sheer number of medical students that only care about what they get on step one. It's literally the most important thing in medical school. And if you're a medical student, you know how much emphasis there is on that score. The difference between a 250 and a 220 is enormous. So the fact that this organization is now changing it to pass fail is de-emphasizing the score. And in doing so, this is just my opinion, but what I think these organizations are doing is trying to allow residency programs to take a more holistic approach when they look at individual candidates for residency. So when do these new changes take effect? Well, the NBME has said that they will occur no earlier than January 1st, 2022. So if you're going to take step one before that date, then this does not apply to you. Your score will still be reported as a three-digit score. This only will take effect after at least January 1st, 2022. So that's pretty much all of the information that's available to us right now. And certainly some of this could change. And as more information comes out, I'll do my best to publish it and make it available to you so you can figure out what's relevant. But I think what's probably relevant for you right now is what I'm going to include in the rest of this video. And let's start by talking about what does this change for you? So should you change how you study for step one just because we're moving from a three-digit score to pass-fail? And as my good friend Dikembe Mutombo would say, no, no, no. So you still need to pass step one to get your licensure, okay? So there's really no point in, in taking your foot off the pedal, so to speak. You should still study for it religiously. You should still make a study schedule. You should still treat it like it's this insurmountable task that you're going to dominate. I don't think that you should personally de-emphasize the exam, even though the NBME is trying to de-emphasize it. You still need to pass this. And if you don't, you will never, ever go to residency. You'll never get your license, okay? So failing step one is still a death sentence, okay? If you fail it, you're really going to face an uphill battle. And I want you to consider for a second that nationally in the United States, there are so many more applicants that are applying to over 100 programs. So there's a higher volume of applications, which means if you're failing, it's going to be even harder for you to get an interview. The other thing is that you still need the knowledge base. So people study really hard for step one. And even if they just get a modest score, let's say they get a, you know, like, I don't know, a two, 219. Okay, slightly below average, but somewhat respectable. If that's your score, even if that was your score, you still gained the knowledge in the process of studying for step one. And that knowledge is applicable when you go on clinical rotations and start to change your focus from the nitty gritty that's on step one to the clinical knowledge you need to be successful as an actual physician. And you also need the discipline. It's always good to remember how to study, how to dedicate yourself to something, how to put down the electronics and focus exclusively on the task in front of you. And studying for step one allows you to maintain that discipline that you're going to need throughout your entire career. So to summarize, should you change how you study just because it's pass fail? No. Now, the next question is, should this change how you approach other parts of medical school that are not boards? And the answer is an overwhelming yes. As my good friend Daniel Bryan would say, yes, yes, yes. So this is what I'm going to say. And this is the most important part of this video. And anybody who turned off the video before getting to this point, you guys are idiots because this is really, really important. You need to focus now on three things, your core clerkships, step two, and your letters of recommendation. Now, why is that important? Well, over time, it's obviously clear that step one scores are going to be de-emphasized. And instead of a program looking at you as a 250, they're going to look at you as a pass. So they're going to be considering other parts of your application to residency to decide, A, should they give you an interview? And B, do they even want to rank you highly after your interview? So what are those programs going to look at? Well, they're obviously going to look at how you interview in person, but the three things on this slide is what they're going to put all their emphasis in. And if you don't believe me, 
here's the rest of that survey that I put on the previous slide. So the other three really important things are the letters of recommendation within your specialty. So for example, if you're applying to emergency medicine, getting a letter of recommendation from an ED physician is really important. And your step two score, obviously also as important as your step one score was, but now that step one is not reported as a three digit score, but step two still is, obviously your step two score is monumentally important. So if they're seeing pass on step one and then 266 on step two, that's a lot better than pass on step one and 220 on step two. The other thing that you should know, just anecdotally speaking, is that a lot of program directors actually care more about step two than they do step one. And that's been true for a while, even before this three digit score was being changed to pass fail on step one. Step two is a much more clinical exam and it probably correlates better to your success as a resident than does your score on step one. So you need to focus on that because now you're gonna just get pass or fail on step one, but step two is still gonna be the three digit score. So you have to do well on that because that's gonna be a huge point of emphasis once these changes take place. And then the last thing that's really important is the grades in your core clerkships. So I'm not talking about elective rotations that you can pick up and random things like that. I'm talking about your main clerkships. So internal medicine, family medicine, peds, psych, OBGYN, general surgery, your, your grade in those, and if you can get honors, are so important now. Because program directors need to be able to separate candidates. They just do. And that's what that step one three-digit score allowed them to do. A 260 was obviously better than a 220, but now that everybody's just going to show up with a pass or a fail, program directors need something else to separate who they're interviewing and who they're ranking. And if you have all honors in your core clerkships and great letters of recommendation and a really sexy step two score, they're obviously going to rank you more favorably. So what I'm saying here, and just to summarize, is that even though the step one score is going to change to pass or fail, these three things are what you should focus on if the change is going to be applicable to you. Let's wrap up really quickly by talking about the other lesser known change. This is just not as big of a deal for a lot of people, so it didn't make headlines like the pass fail thing did, but they've actually reduced the total allowable attempts that you can take on step one. So previously you could take the exam up to six times. So if you failed five times, you, were, you could take it a sixth time and try to pass it before you were no longer eligible to take it. And now that number is being reduced. I'm not, this is just my opinion, but I think that the reason that's happening is that now that it's pass or fail, it's kind of like quote unquote easy now. It's, it's not hard to pass step one if you, if you work hard and you study. Previously, you might've only gotten a 210, but now you're gonna just get a pass. And they're not gonna be able to know if you got a 210 or a 260. And for that reason, I believe that the NBME probably wants to reduce the number of attempts that you can take so that they still have a high quality of medical professionals in the United States. Again, that's just my opinion as to why they're probably doing this, but the takeaway is that they did reduce the total number of allowable attempts. And what that means for you is that if you're kind of lazy and you don't study really hard, work your butt off for this exam. You don't want to fail four times and not be eligible to get licensure in the United States. Now guys, that's all I have for you in this video. If there's more relevant news that comes out about these major USMLE step one changes, I will do my best to put it all together in a video for you. But this is really gonna make people's lives a lot easier. This is sort of the takeaway from this video. I think everyone's lives are gonna be a lot easier because they don't have to stress about step one. But what you will have to start to stress about a little bit more is how you're doing in your rotations, what your letters of recommendations look like, and still taking that step two and dominating it. So that's all. Good luck.